Okay, let's have a talk about jib sheets, jibs and trimming them upwind. I don't think I've talked about them yet. We've all seen this thing, it's a big winch and a handle. That's the bit that pulls it on. When you go, when you pull it on, when you go down, when you let it off, yeah? Easy as that. Uh-uh, no, no, no. Most boats will have something like this. Um, this is a track for adjusting the leech of the sail depending on what angle you're sailing. And we'll come to how that works in a minute. Some nice boats actually have this track going sideways instead of fore and back. And we'll talk about what the advantages of that are in a minute. Now let's actually have a look at our sail. This Wonderful bit of blackness here is my headsail. There is a bunch of things I am looking for in this headsail. One, I'm looking at the shape of the leech. That's the back edge of the leech. You can see where the sheet attaches on my boat. It's fairly high. On some boats, that point will be down here. Now where it attaches, you want it straight as possible and following the shape of the mainsail and the mast as much as possible about the bottom two-thirds to three-quarters of the way is a rough rule of thumb so you want it fairly straight from where the sheet attaches to the sail going up the leech here and then you'll see where that second orange stripe is it then starts to twist coming back in towards the head of the sail right that's what we call the twist profile of the jib. We want to have, normally we'd have little fluffy tails hanging off the back of it, but this particular sail hasn't got it yet. It's a bit new and we haven't, we've got some fine details we've got to sort out on it. Um, now, how do we change this twist profile here? Well, let's come back to this thing we had a look at before. This car, okay? If the car goes forward, it changes the sheeting angle here, right? The more that this sheet falls downwards, the more it pulls. Uh, go out here. The back edge of the jib down and the straighter it makes that. If I have the car way back here this angle here goes from here and it's much flatter so it'll pull the foot of the jib so that's from the tack to the clue it's going to pull that tight before it pulls the leech here down so now we can have a look at the leech from a slightly different perspective okay you can see it's fairly straight from the corner here up to here and then from there it rolls into our head so that's our point of maximum twist between the second and the third orange stripes there okay that's one of the things we're looking for let's see if you can see it uh yeah you can sort of see that <laughs> i'm trying to trying to keep from here to here as straight as possible with the mask at the moment yes I am open in the bottom and I need my barber hauler to actually pull my sheet the bottom here closer to the mast because you can actually see the gap here is much wider than the gap at that three-quarter mark okay sort of wedging out a little bit so I need to make some changes to improve this sail trim on this the other thing I'm looking at, these things here, my woolies. 
they're pretty easy. Everyone should know about these. Basically, you want both sets flying. You want the windward set, which is the green ones in this side, flying, and you want the leeward set, which is the red ones on the other side of the window. Let's go and have a look at them. There they are. There's the red ones flying with the sail. That means I have airflow attached to both sides of the jib here. Okay, you'll see my four-stay sags, not quite as loose as Nana's knickers like it used to be. Made a few little tweaks to the boat, and uh, improved a few things. Um, yeah, so it's a very simple one where if the red one on the other side is hanging down or flicking up, means the flow is not attached and I need to ease the sail towards that telltale that's upset. In this case, you can see my green one. There you go, just lifted. It means I actually got to bring the sail towards that uh, telltale. So I'm sheeting it on a little bit to make it go faster or, or put breeze on it and attach it to this side. Okay, now let's look at a few other little bits and pieces. Now, if you wonder why I got these great big orange stripes on my sail, one, it looks cool. Yeah, and that's most important, yeah? So in reality, the orange stripes on my sail are for the exact purpose for you and me to look at the shape of my sail. This is the shape of the sail. A lot of people say, oh, how's the shape of my sail? And they refer to it as how big the triangle is or how hollow the leech is or how much round is in the foot. That is not the shape of your sail. This is the important shape of your sail. From the forestay, that curvy bit through the sail, out to the back end. It's this shape here that lets you sail upwind or produce a lot of power. Now the curvier this orange stripe is, okay, the more power the sail will generate. The issue is if you've got too much curve here, you cannot actually come close to the wind because there's too much curve for the wind to try and um, not curve around, but you just basically this piece here is pointing into the wind. So the wind is coming from here, right? So you can see this is what we call the entry angle of the sail and my fingers pointing into the orange stripe. If that orange stripe was rounder or fuller like this, that would mean that the wind has to come from more this angle, which means I'm not pointing as upwind because straight into the wind is this way, you know, from the fourth day here to the mast. That's straight up wind. So we need to keep this sail as flat and as shallow as possible to go as close as we can upwind. This is the really tricky part is where we balance this curved shape here being deep and full enough versus being flat enough and not powerful enough but will go very high into the wind. So this is a balance and this is where you're going to talk to the sailmaker a lot about getting the shape right, giving him the right specs for your boat, how fast your boat goes, how slow your boat goes, when you're tacking angles you are trying to get out of the boat, being realistic about it. And this also comes back to the thing I harp on about second most other than my main sheet is polars and the polars help us analyze most importantly the apparent wind angles that this sail sees okay now your polars are all in true wind angles but what we do is we reverse engineer out of our true wind polars and we look at the apparent wind because it's the apparent wind that this sail sees and feels all right, let's go and have a look at that, what that means on our little screen. Okay, here we have our true wind. All right, 12 knots at the moment, and our true wind angle, 54 degrees, okay? I'm sailing it, what we call sailing fat. I'm not sailing tight, tight upwind. 
on the crank sheet a little bit. You could see that I needed that barber hauler to bring me in to get my tight tight angle. Okay, it's because I'm actually making a headland over here rather than actually tacking up wind, but another story. Now, the true wind is 11 knots. So if I was standing still on the water, I've got 11 knots, oh, nearly 12 knots of wind in my face. But I'm standing on the boat here and I've got 18 knots of wind in my face. So that's the apparent wind. Now this is the wind that the headsail feels. This is also the angle that the headsail sees. It doesn't see 53 degrees. It sees 31 degrees now. Okay, so you can see here on my little dial here that the blue one is my true wind and the red one here is my apparent wind. So we've dragged the apparent wind because we're standing on the boat from 55 degrees all the way forward to 34 at the moment. Okay, so this is really important when you're designing the sail that the sail is strong enough to handle the apparent wind loads. It's also got to be able, flat enough to handle the shallower wind angles. Like I'm down at 31 degrees now, okay? When I'm sailing upwind, upwind, this is like 28, 29 degrees. And this is all a function of this, the boat speed, the true wind speed and the true wind angle, okay? The faster my boat moves through the water, the higher this is gonna be and the shallower this is gonna be. So if I went faster, this would come down to 25, 26. If I'm an America's Cup yacht, you know, they scream around the harbour at a million miles an hour. Their true wind angle is 45 degrees, but their apparent wind angle is 16 degrees. So it's a very, very important thing to relate your polars and that your polars are realistic with your boat to a sailmaker as to how to set your sail up. It also helps you to always look and manage how you're sailing upwind. Things like the autopilot, when I'm sailing, I sail upwind with the autopilot on the wind vane true wind, not the apparent wind. When I'm sailing downwind, however, different ball game because I'm apparent wind sailing with the sails that I have and the boat that I have, and I've got to surf waves and chase the thing. Like I said, the sails feel the apparent wind. So I change to apparent wind sailing when I'm sailing downwind, okay? So hopefully that covers the basics of the jib trim. There's a lot of really fine details that go into trimming a headsail. Uh, and that's why you know, we have specialized headsail and mainsail trimmers. It's, it's, it is a bit of an art. And there's things in having the sail slightly more twisted makes the boat more forgiving and easier to sail through sloppy stuff versus having a really tight leech and um changing the shape with the car back and trying to flatten the the sail for going fast in flat water or windy conditions so there are a few tricks there but the very basics are you need to know how that car there works that it moves backwards and forwards to change the the, the, the twisting of the leech of the sail what I didn't talk about was actually the cars that went sideways, did I? All right. So in some cases, boats will have self-tacking uh, jibs and athwart ship cars. Now they work just like a main sheet. It's pretty simple. You have the track going sideways, so that trims the sail in and out in relation to the, to the boat. So that changes the angle of attack of the sail to the wind. Okay, basically the closer you go to the wind, the, the closer to center line you bring the car of the um, headsail. Not too far, never bring it to center line. I see a lot of people with self-tacking headsails pin their self-tacker off in the middle of the bloody boat. Don't do that. You always need at least five to six degrees of um, openness in your car. Most of the cruising boats guys that'll be watching this you're gonna be at 8 to 10 maybe even 12 degrees uh, okay 
then the jib sheet actually then becomes like a main sheet. It uh, controls the twist profile. As you pull the sheet on, not only does it bring the sail into the block. Um, so this thing here, let's 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 imagine that's the front of our boat out there now. This is across the boat. This is our track, and we're going off to a headsail here. Okay. Sails out here. We bring the sail down into our block. If we ease the jib sheet the jib sheet goes straight up first and if the jib sheet goes up it allows the sail to twist open particularly at the head okay so it's really important to understand that the jib sheet on self tackers and a thwart ship um, setups is slightly different in that you've got a lot of control over the twist of the sail and it's like I was talking about in a main sheet upwind video about twist um, and how main sheet tracks and travelers work. As you ease the sheet, you ease and the, and the, the sail twists out. As you pull on the sheet, it brings the twist in and brings the leech tighter and straighter. Then we use the car side to side to move that sail in and out closer or further away from the center line of the boat. Okay. Hopefully you can picture my hand as a sail and that's the front of the boat instead of the side of the boat. Anyway, um, hopefully that makes some sense for some people.